Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. So there are more um, equipments that I can talk about now. They are within the, the point store after you've finished a server. Uh, you just come here, I can't afford the tech restoration center, unfortunately, didn't quite get enough points there um, to pick up some of these uh, boxes, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, I had a bit of a relaxed last server, so uh, I didn't really earn much in the way of dawn points. Uh, but there are equipment tires here. I have picked one up. Um, I'd actually recommend not picking any of these up because they are temporary and they only um, last for a single server. Uh, but I wanted to just jump in and chat to a, a little bit about them. Something to note, if you've seen the community post, you already know this. But um, the unidentified boxes, you'll get like a, a prompt in here. So if you come into your items, go to your unidentified, you'll have a box here. If you click on that, it'll take you to a new screen where you can open that box and that kind of stuff. Uh, this is what I got. Um, allows the construction produce. Uh, it's basically, uh, no, that's not what I got. It was an item I got. I got one of these i'm pretty certain it was one of these um silly little firework display things which are completely and utterly pointless to the game um so yeah you you can get absolute and utter trash from the boxes something to note as well I did only get one of the boxes, as you'll know, I was testing the theory out. Uh, if you could be docked to uh, the outpost, and uh, you cannot, it has to be outposts only. The one I got was for the Noma, uh, so it's probably this one that I got, actually, the Noma Shipping Group Firework Display. Um, so yeah, I don't know, uh, unfortunately, what your sort of chances are of getting uh, something I'm well actually useful and permanent versus uh, what chances you're gonna get or something utterly useless like I mean firework display bloody UAVs um, so be aware of that uh, it could be kind of completely useless um, and yeah outposts only do not dock your base to uh, to them so Back to what we're talking about. Uh, this is the one that I wanted to test out and pick up because it's got an interesting ability. Allows commissioned galactic factions to produce cruisers with a production time time reduction of 5% and a production interval of 10 hours. Not a clue what this is really gonna allow me to do. I'm hoping it'll allow me to go to a galactic faction and say, build me a cruiser, they'll build me a cruiser and deliver it to me and I can add it to my fleet. What choices and cruises will be, I don't know. I'll let you know when I get into server because I'll be trying to use this as soon as possible because if I can get a cruiser out the first day or two, it makes life considerably easier when you're taking out pirates and the likes. Also has the uh, increased base military port command point by 10. Uh, I'm guessing this will be 10 per level, so you get an extra 100 uh, command point limit here. Uh, which isn't isn't bad, especially now that we can give fleets to outposts and mining platforms and that kind of thing. The extra command points may actually come in use at some point. As before, you could only really get two good fleets out and maybe a third okay one, but then you're kind of limited with your action points and that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll have to see. Maybe this... Uh, Maybe this is completely made redundant because we can supply things or supply fleets to outposts, uh, which is kind of what I'm thinking of. Or at the same time, it might be quite good because it might let you get a like a third proper fleet out potentially. There are others though, as I was uh, discussing a second ago. If we come down here, I would ignore all of these, although they are, they are kind of cool. I love this one. You know, reinforce six squadrons six fighter craft into your fleet that have been uh, destroyed it's quite a cool idea and i like the concept of just just shooting off a giant crater at your uh crater giant crate at your fleet and it just opening up and uh, craft coming out and redocking with you it's kind of like kind of fun um 
The mining UAVs you all guys probably know about, they'll go mine resources for you. 50,000 resources, just to give you an idea, is about 1,250 crystal. Uh, so really not that much in the grand scheme of things, because I'm pretty certain like most of your big craft that you're going to be building, we might want the extra crystal, um, cost way more than that. Got the space... Um, space Operation Planning Coordinator reduces action points consumed by the next three delivery operations or fleets by 10, out, by 10 for one hour. It's kind of pointless, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you don't really, you, you're just never going to use it. Uh, resource Beacon creates a small, rather small amount of random resource packs from a space station controlled by neutral org or your own org. This isn't too bad if it's just the standard resource packs. And if you can force it to give you large resource packs, it might actually be kind of good. We also have the high power broadcast, allows information to be broadcast in the airspace within 200 GM for 10 hours after this launch to an active operation. Honestly, I have no idea what that means or does still. Uh, so we're going to have to sort of see that and some useless bloody fireworks again. More importantly, though, let's talk about this equipment because, like I said, it is only active for one server so if you're picking it up you're only going to get one use out of it now for the ones that cost storm points you could argue it might be okay but the one that costs proximate uh which i've picked up here i probably wouldn't pick up personally um i have picked it up because i'm curious about this function that it has and if we can get a permanent version of this and this function's quite good it could be interesting because being able to just go, hey, build me a cruiser. Okay, it takes 10 hours, but it's cost you nothing. It's potentially really quite good. Um, so we'll have to see on that, and especially if it allows you to get stuff out quicker. Like day one, 10 hours later, you've got a cruiser running around. You've got a Jaeger or something going ready for your aircraft in, what, your second day normally you can get up to the aircraft. Um, so, yeah, it could be could be pretty game changing for that early game play but we'll have to wait and see um we have the advanced military operation center here increase the number of usable operations by one and it's also got the military port command points which again it's like a 50 50 if it's going to be useful or not Increasing the number of usable operations by one's pretty good though and it looks like it can be upgraded so you can get two operations um, if you were in a smaller union and maybe you don't have many of the org ops going down and stuff like that, or maybe you've been unable to get yourself a mining platform out because it keeps getting destroyed, having extra operations is actually not a bad thing to have. Um, I have definitely come into positions in large wars where I've never had mining operations and uh, mining platforms going, and you run out of operations when you're like going on the offense because you've got so many operations tied up for your mining ops, especially sort of mid-game when you've got mining, uh, your medium miners out and that kind of thing. Uh, so could be pretty useful. Um, we also have the Dauntless Cord Combat Microchip Center. Produces one combat microchip at the base every 15 hours up to 10. I'm going to tell you now that this is actually utter trash. The fact that it's got a limit at 10 max is it is a complete waste of time, this thing. Even if upgraded, because it has a limit means it's terrible. Because um, you can go out, I can go out, and in 15 hours, I'm a thousand percent certain I can get way more than 10 combat microchips just by going and blowing up pirate fleets way more than 10 in 15 hours i can do 10 in like maybe two hours just spending all of my action points on blowing up fleets it honestly this is utterly awful if it was 15 hours and it had no limit you could argue it because then you could calculate what three months divided by 15 hours and you'll get how many microchips you get and you'd be like, well, actually, that, that's not too bad. And it's just passively, you know, giving you combat microchips. It's not bad at that point. But the fact that it's got a limit has just completely and utterly ruined it.
This, unfortunately, on the other hand, this bonus here is actually quite good, provides an additional hour, hourly metal production yield of 500. And if it's 500 and it can be increased by 500 for every level that you can get tech points into this, it's potentially pretty, pretty good. Um, it's like having, it's almost equivalent to a large miner maxed out, I believe, just giving you metal every hour. Uh, so, which is a shame, because like I said, the combat microchip output thing is useless, but the metal refining process optimization is good. So maybe keep an eye out for that. Uh, so, because we know that, you know, these can potentially be duplicated on other structures. Keep an eye out for it. It might be quite good uh, at some other point. We also have the Dawn Standardized Module Assembly Facility. Uh, this reduces resource consumption by 2.5% uh, when building Dawn Accord organization ships in the base. I'm not sure what that means because I can't think of any ships that are Dawn Accord organization ships. You got Antonius, Anton, Noma, Jupiter. Does it mean standard? If it means standard, 2.5% reduction on the standard uh, ships, which are, I mean, we can even see them uh, here somewhere. Standard military tech files. You know, FG300s, AC721s, CAS, KCCPVs. The ST59s are quite expensive and useful. FSVs, useless. CV3Ks. I mean, 2.5%, if you haven't got... Um, you know, your Noma Carrier, your Solar Whale, and that kind of thing. So you're running CV3K, or you're not running Marshall Crooks. 2.5% reduction in cost in that's pretty good. 2.5% reduction in cost in the SD59 is pretty good. Of the fighters, the AT021 has one good variant. The rest are kind of not too good. The CVM11, actually, the new variant, is uh, is pretty good. So... It's, it's, it's okay if you've got a spurred slot and you don't have anything better, you could potentially use that. I, it'd be fine. So, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, it also comes with the aircraft production processing optimization, reduces production resource consumption of Dawn Accord organization aircraft again by 1%. We just covered the aircraft. There's two of them that may be worth anything. Um, and a 1% reduction aircrafts don't cost a lot. To build even maxed out in tech points uh, like i run for a lot of my aircraft they they really don't cost that much and i really never struggle to have resources to build aircraft um so this is a bit and unfortunately not particularly great again these are upgradable though if it's 2.5 percent for each level you five seven and a half ten what 15 percent there 15 percent resource reduction resource cost reduction on ST59s and CV3Ks. That's a lot of resources saved, to be honest. And again, here, we can go up to seven, so it might be eight, seven or eight percent here. Uh, I guess not terrible, but probably not amazing either. So there are some extra little sort of equipment highs. I'm gonna recommend that you don't pick any of them. Um, again, I've picked this one up because I'm really interested in how this works because this could be really quite cool. Um, and I just want to see. I should probably pick up some of these, uh, like the... No, not the reduce action point one. This one. Do you know what? I'll, I'll do it on. Yeah, there you go. I have picked up that. High power broadcast beacon. Why not? Uh, we'll pick one of those up. We'll see what the hell all this allows information to be broadcast in the airspace, whatever that means. I'm curious. Um, so, when I get into server, I'll be testing these out as soon as possible so I can give you an update on them. Uh, at the moment, full exploration preparation before you go into a server, before you sign, I highly recommend that each of you, if you have picked up equipment, click in the exploration button at the bottom. You'll get chucked over to this screen which is where you can bring in your items and equipment and that kind of stuff so we can see uh, your strategic assets and what have you here and then uh, if we go back we go to our equipment 
you have your three slots here. As you can see, I've set mine up and confirmed. You need to drag these over, so click on them and they'll be down here. Drag them over and confirm your payload. That is how you uh, apply your equipment for the next server you're going to go into. Be aware, there is a storage, uh, transport storage limit, and you need to try and keep under that as well. And as you can see, some of these cost uh, a bit more to run than other ones. My A rated one, um, or they've rated it A, has seven uh, cost, and the Bs uh, are at six and at five. So it seems a little bit random on what they are sort of costed at. Uh, we'll have to find more of them to see, uh, see, well, any more really. And yeah, that's about it. Confirm payload, and that means when you start your server, you will have these equipment slotted and ready to go when you join in. So do make sure uh, if you have got equipment to slot them in before you go into uh, a server, otherwise you won't be getting the benefits from them. So that is all for today. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.